When I saw the next-gen trailer for FIFA 21, I was admittedly impressed. Rodrigo running around, the high-def moles on Trent's face. Just look at that 4K sweat dripping off Mbappe's forehead. I could almost taste the salt coming off this glistening Ninja Turtle. All with the tagline, feel next level. And now that next-gen FIFA is finally here, I can tell you that next level sh that's a lie. Like yeah, if we go close up on players' faces and freeze frames, the new player models can look phenomenal. The hair looks shampoo ready. And the details in the head models, man, you could see the pores now. I didn't even know I wanted to see pores, but we, we have it. And honestly, that's what next-gen power is for. Porous fidelity. Like for God's sakes, you could see every goddamn pimple on the back of Bruno Fernandez's head. Anybody who's getting a head scan for FIFA, order some proactive. Get your skin game right, because it is going to show on next-gen. But there is a major issue here, and that is, you don't play FIFA close up and in freeze frames. You play it like this, and with the new camera angle and the new next-gen graphics, it kind of looks, kind of looks the same. And I'm not the only one who says this. Some have said that FIFA 17 actually looks better, and I kind of agree. And it just seems to be the same thing over and over again. If you look at things close up, it looks great. Like if you look at the grass close up, it looks fine. But from far up, it kind of looks like shit. It looks plasticky. And that is kind of next-gen FIFA in a nutshell. It only feels next-gen when you're freeze-frame it or you're really close up. But when in live motion, it, it it's pretty much the same, but 15 to 20% sharper. And that doesn't go for just the gameplay, but just for everything about next-gen FIFA 21. It is, in so many ways, exactly the same. Menus are exactly the same, career mode is exactly the same, FUD is pretty much exactly the same, Volta, nobody plays that, so who cares? And this is, is both good and bad. Good, in that historically, the leap to next-gen usually means getting a lot of the new features added to career mode from current-gen. But thankfully, this time, all the new welcomed additions, such as development plans, the new football manager dot simmer, financial takeover, dynamic potential, they're all brought over. Thank God. But on the other hand, I got to remember that this is a video game played on the cutting edge of technology. And it feels like what I've been playing for the past five years. And that shouldn't be. Now I fully understand why EA were so generous and offered a free upgrade for those who had bought current gen FIFA. Because that is pretty much how next gen FIFA feels like. A free upgrade. If I already bought current gen FIFA and then paid full retail for next gen FIFA, I'd feel scammed. Because it looks and plays nearly identical to PS4 or Xbox One. Let me remind you that FIFA 14 on next gen was a brand new game engine and it sucked. But at least it was new. FIFA 21 on PS5 is damn near a direct port of FIFA 21 from PS4 with a slightly shinier paint job. It's basically, you remember when they took Last of Us, which was a PS3 game and they remastered it for PS4? Same energy, because FIFA 21 Next Gen is pretty much the same game with a 15 to 20% upgrade graphically and a couple of new, admittedly fun animations. Like it is cool that you see Jurgen Klopp hugging his players after the match. And if you do score a last minute winner, the celebration is really fun. It's hype, it's immersive, it totally gets you in the state of limbs. But this is Next Gen FIFA. And I don't think you pay $300 to $500 on a console to see Jurgen Klopp hug his players or Bruno Fernandez's acne. Now, I'm not going to kill EA too much because you got to remember that this was all done. This was all created during the age of COVID. But let's call a spade a spade here. FIFA 21 Next Gen should not be called Next Gen. This is a port. Remember, there was a clear difference between PS3 FIFA 14 and PS4 FIFA 14. And although it was disappointing that they cut a lot of the features from career mode for the next gen version, at least it had new menus. And more importantly, they shifted away from the impact engine of the Xbox 360 days and debuted the new Ignite engine, which made gameplay drastically different from the previous current gen. While in FIFA 21, there is little to no difference between the PS4 version and the PS5 version. Now gameplay does feel slightly different than current gen and playing on legendary with competitor mode on felt fun and more balanced than current gen AI. But it also suffers from the same gameplay issues of the past, inconsistent passing, head scratching defending from even the best center backs in the game. And many have voiced difficulty defending, especially when using the PS5 controller due to the haptic feedback. Luckily you can turn that off, but overall, if everything is equal, I must admit that I, I did really enjoy the new next-gen gameplay more than current-gen, although not enough to warrant buying a $500 game system for it. And that is a plus, because if you remember, FIFA 14 on next-gen was the worst gameplay 
ever. All it was was paste down the wing and then cross it in. Paste down the wing, cross it in. Paste down the wing, cross it in. And the game turned Victor Barbo into a god. So I get it. If they had attempted to make the leap to a new engine this year with all of the COVID delays, could you imagine the gameplay if they actually tried to put it on a new engine this year? It'd be a complete shit show. And on top of that, it would most likely would have been a horrible first impression for this new game engine. So I think they made the savvy tactical move here. They just ported FIFA 21 over from current gen, and they're going to give themselves another full year to focus on creating a true next gen FIFA. And they're kind of admitting as much when they're offered the free upgrade for those who already bought current gen FIFA. It's a smart business decision for EA, but ultimately disappointing for gamers. My advice is if you want the true next gen FIFA experience, wait a year for FIFA 22. And for career mode fans, the best experience is still by far on PC. Specifically because you can use the mods to get back all the licensed teams and kits, get updated faces or real faces added in. Like players like Mason Greenwood, even on next gen, still don't have a real scan face. And on top of that, you could do other shenanigans like add in icons or play with like a giant ball, giant players, men versus women. All this is possible on the PC. And even the issues with the AI and the gameplay can be modded and improved. The Pfeiffer's Realism mod, which has been fantastic, just so much fun to play with over the past couple of years, is about to be released as well. Now, for some reason, the next-gen version of FIFA is not being ported to PC this year, and that one is, is puzzling because it's essentially the same game, just a little bit prettier. But hopefully they rectify it next year with the new game engine. But in conclusion, I'm going to make this quick. My overall review of next-gen FIFA is a D. Barely passable. And the only reason I didn't give it an F is that the game runs well, they didn't fuck anything up, but in many ways, this simply is not a next-gen game. There's nothing next-gen about it beyond a, a facelift. No new game modes, no market leap in gameplay or features, no new game engine. It's just a port of the PS4 version. And the only people that I can truly recommend getting next-gen FIFA are people who have already bought a next-gen console for like another game that they're a fan of and have the ability to do the free upgrade to next-gen FIFA. And to everybody else out there who's feeling sad or FOMO because they couldn't get a PS5, don't, don't feel that bad. Because I can honestly say, if I wasn't running a YouTube channel, I would have returned my new Xbox by now and just waited another year. And if you want to know specifically my review of next-gen career mode in FIFA 21, I will do like EA does and port you over to my current gen review of all the new features. It all still applies because essentially it's the same game. And that is it for this quick review because there's honestly not all too much to say. If you did find this informative, go ahead, leave a like. I also did a video on how games like FIFA and COD are using these psychological tricks on gamers. So go ahead, check that out. And also I'm trying to do a little bit something different on the channel and your guys' support is always appreciated. And speaking of support, I'd like to go ahead and thank my lovely, lovely patrons who are keeping me alive during the global pandemic. Can you guys go ahead and sign up for the $1 army now? I am doing a Christmas Q&A and I'll be answering at least one question from all of you guys. So go ahead, check that out. If you want more content from me, go over, click over here. But that is going to be it for me. Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. Remember, stay yourselves, stay humble. Until next time, stay thick.